This patient has been brought to the procedure area for elective cardioversion. This procedure is indicated for persistent atrial fibrillation or flutter as part of a rhythm control strategy with or without antiarrhythmic drug therapy. The patient has been in atrial fibrillation for six weeks and has been on a therapeutic dose of an antithrombotic agent for one month. The medical history is reviewed and the benefits and potential risks of the procedure are discussed with the patient. A focused physical exam is performed including assessment of the airway. Informed consent is obtained and a timeout is performed to confirm the patient ID, procedure, medical personnel and equipment are all correct. Patient monitoring includes an intravenous line for medication and fluid administration, a blood pressure cuff with intermittent recording, and continuous oxygen saturation display in addition to the ECG monitor. The defibrillator patches are placed in an anterior posterior position at the mid-sternal area and on the back between the shoulder blades. The ECG leads are attached and connected to the defibrillator. The ECG tracing is checked on the defibrillator to make sure a carrot appears over each QRS complex. This indicated correct sensing by the defibrillator system allows the delivered shock to be synchronized with the ECG signal. Anesthesiologist assesses airway, connects supplemental O2, prepares short-acting anesthetic drug or drugs, and begins IV infusion. The anesthesiologist administers a quick-acting anesthetic agent into the IV as he explains to the patient what he may experience. The amount of medication is titrated, and when the anesthesiologist gives the signal that the patient is fully asleep. The defibrillation is set at 200 joules for a biphasic shock. Sensing is confirmed by the carrot on each QRS complex, the sync mode is turned on, and the yellow charge button is pushed. Once charged, an all-clear is called, the MD checks that no staff are touching the patient, and the red button on the defibrillator is pushed. The shock is administered, jolting the patient. The ECG monitor shows sinus rhythm for a few beats, but then atrial fibrillation recurs. A second attempt is made at cardioversion with the energy output increased from 200 to 300 joules. Anterior-posterior placement of the defibrillator again is used, and the sink indicator is checked. The carrot is present above each QRS on the monitor confirming the cardioversion mode. Firm pressure on the anterior pad is provided using a rolled towel, which is a non-conductor. This additional pressure, along with administering the shock and expiration, assures that all the energy is delivered to the patient's heart. After administration of additional anesthetic, as indicated, the defibrillator is again charged and all clear is called and the shock administered. Immediate assessment of the ECG shows normal sinus rhythm. However, the rhythm soon returns to atrial fibrillation. The cardiologist decides that in this case, further attempts at cardioversion are not appropriate. Third attempts may be tried, if indicated, using maximum output and anterolateral electrode pad placement. For atrial flutter, an initial energy level of 100 joule is increased to 200 joule for a second attempt and 300 joule if a third attempt is necessary. After the procedure, the patient's vital signs, rhythm, oxygen saturation, and level of consciousness are closely monitored. The rhythm is watched closely for any serious bradycardia or sustained serious arrhythmias like VT or VF. The skin is assessed for any burns. Within a few minutes, the patient wakes up from anesthesia. Once the patient is stable, the defibrillation pads are removed and a 12-lead ECG is performed to document the post-procedure rhythm and assess for any other complications. The results of the procedure are discussed with the patient. Expecting post-anesthetic amnesia, the cardiologist plans to discuss the results with the family.